All right, good afternoon everyone. My name is Matt Dick and I work for the KZN Sharks Board and today I'm going to give a talk looking at the socio-economic uh, impacts of the dive industry at Sudwana. The presentation will focus on diver expenditures, motivations and experiences with a particular focus on shark diving at Sudwana. Now in a world where money talks, nature needs the value to give it a voice and that's very important uh, within the Isamangaliso Wetland Park where until uh, very recently, sharks could still be caught and killed by fishermen. Um, now, one of the main goals of this project was to try and assign a value to sharks, which could, be, which could then be used to motivate for their protection um, and hopefully aid to the sustainability of sharks within the MPA. Okay, the demand for opportunities to experience marine animals in their natural environment is growing on a worldwide scale. And shark diving in particular is an a increasingly growing component of the tourism market. There's now 300 dive sites worldwide, in 40 countries in fact worldwide, offering divers the opportunity to dive with sharks. Um, now, the values, few values have been uh, uh, published on the valuation of shark diving, but the few that have show that it's an incredibly lucrative market. As we can see here, the Canary Island shark and ray diving, uh, 22.8 million rands. The Maldives estimated that 2.3 million, sorry, this is all in dollars. The Bahamas, it generates over 78 million dollars. The dive industry uh, in French Polynesia, 5.4 million dollars. So you can see it's an important rev revenue stream to many coastal uh, communities. Now in South Africa, shark diversity and a very um, varied marine environment provides unparalleled opportunities for shark dive attractions. Uh, currently there's uh, a variety of shark diving opportunities uh, in South Africa at the moment. We've also got the Ragatou shark, that's the one here. You can dive at Aliwal Shoal, Protea Banks, the Isamangaliso Wetland Park, Sudwana. Great white shark, typically uh, people dive with that in the southern and western capes. Bull sharks, Sudwana, um, Aliwal Shoal, and Protea Banks. Tiger sharks, big industry now at Aliwal Shoal in KZN. Whale sharks, Isamangaliso Wetland Park, Aliwal Shoal. Seven gill cow sharks, this is a new species of sharks where a dive attraction has been set up in the western cape. And lastly, uh, black tip diving. There's a big baited shark attraction with uh, black tips, duskies, at Aliwal Shoal. Again, few valuations have been conducted, but the few that have, okay, um, the few that have been conducted again shows that these industries can. Uh, uh, can provide a very, very important value stream to uh, coastal communities, many of which are very impoverished. Okay, so Sudwana Bay. Sudwana Bay is one of South Africa's premier dive destinations. It's uh, situated in the St. Lucia MPA. Now, together with the adjacent Maputo MPA, um, forms part of the Isamangaliso Wetland Park. Those MPAs stretch pretty much continuously from the Mozambique border, 150 kilometers south, uh, down towards Cape Vidal, stretches about five kilometers out to sea. Now it's one of South Africa's most uh, popular dive and fishing uh, destinations, um, primarily because it's the southernmost extent of coral reefs in South Africa, and that provides a uh, high diversity of marine fish, which attracts the divers and fishers. So, Sudwana Bay, it's a multiple use MPA, so a variety of activities take place uh, within the park. Diving, fishing, sea kayaking, whale watching. But although it was declared a World Heritage Site back in 2000, um, anglers can still uh, kill and catch sharks. So here's a picture of uh, ragatou sharks. These are both ragatou sharks. Now this species is known to congregate uh, for as part of its uh, gestation cycle in Sudwana. So it's very susceptible, it's part of a life history stage that's very, very susceptible to fishing. And as I say, we can see here sharks with fins missing. You can't see it clearly here, but that's a, a spear gun harpoon that's been put through the gills 
of the shark. And this looks like maybe a small black tip or grey reef shark that's just been hung up on a sign. Oh, let me just in fact go uh, back a bit. So the removal of sharks, not only could that be uh, a, a negative to the diving industry within Sudwana, but it can also um, affect the health of the marine environment. So this study, as I say, was looking to assign a value to sharks to try and afford them maybe some protection within the park. So between July uh, 2011 and July 2012, we conducted an on-site questionnaire of divers. It was an on-site questionnaire. Very quickly, we collected 750 questionnaires, and from the responses from participants, we could work out the mean uh, sample expenditure on various activities that were related to someone visiting the park to dive, so park entry costs, dive costs, food accommodation, etc. Now, EKZ and Wildlife uh, collects uh, information on the number of dives at Sudawana from logbook records, and they collected, in this 12-month period, almost 60,000 dives. So in our questionnaire survey, the mean number of dives that each participant conducted was 3.8. So if we divide the number of dives by 3.8, we came up with a rough estimate of just under 16,000 divers. And we used that figure to extrapolate the mean expenditures to come up with a total valuation of diving in Sudwana. It's, ju it's just simply based on direct spend. So it's a very, very conservative estimate, but it does give us some indication as to the value of the industry. And then from that, we basically apportioned, using the proportion of dives that uh, participants said that they conducted on reefs on, with ragged two sharks and whale sharks and other shark species, we were able to apportion part of that economic, that total economic value to each of these categories. So, just looking at the results. The first thing we noticed, and these are results collected from EKZN Wildlife. We can see that the number of dives conducted at Sudwana since 2005 to 2012 to declined. And that decline has actually been a significant decline. The reasons for that are uncertain. Probably the most um, likely explanation is that increased accessibility to Mozambique, new dive opportunities, less regulations, it's probably maybe taken some divers away from Sudwana to go up to Mozambique. What's important maybe from a management perspective is that the Isamangaliso Wetland Park in part is financed through the user pays principle. So divers would pay for the, the privilege of diving in an MPA to see big fish, beautiful reefs in, in a pristine MPA environment. Now less divers to the park of course means less revenue to the Isamangaliso Wetland Park. So that's something that maybe needs to be thought about. You know, why are divers going and how can we maybe get divers back to the park? All right. During the study period, the majority of respondents were from South Africa. They were mostly from KZN and Hauteng. That's not surprising. They're the two closest provinces and two largest. Divers um, originated from 22 countries. Most were from England, America, and Germany. Almost all the respondents surveyed were white, with the majority being male. Uh, male. Those, these results are all very, very similar for most dive sites around South Africa. This is the profile of the dive industry. Divers range from 12 to 64 years of age, with a mean of 34. The majority of respondents had an agile personal and household income above 250,000. The dive community is typically a, a fairly wealthy uh, community. Diving is expensive. And on average, respondents spent about 4.4 days at Sudwana and conducted 3.8 dives. So looking at sharks as an attraction, the majority of respondents knew that they could dive with sharks at Sudwana, but surprisingly, almost 30% didn't. And this is despite the fact that Sudwana is one of the best places in South Africa to see species like whale sharks and ragatoo sharks. These are popular dive uh, shark species to dive with. Not surprisingly, the vast majority of dives that uh, participants said they conducted were on reefs. That's what Sudwana is known for, it's reef diving. Not many dives were conducted by whale sharks and ragged two sharks or other shark species. So the main attraction to Sudwana is reef diving. 
The majority of respondents, however, stated they were interested in shark diving and they would certainly welcome uh, more opportunities to dive with sharks and it would actually encourage them to maybe visit Stuana more often. Almost all respondents stated they would like sharks to receive full protection within the MPAs. Uh, many divers were surprised that anglers could still catch and kill sharks. And in fact, many divers were also willing to spend at least 100 rand, if not more, above the cost of their dive uh, to use that money to go into some sort of um, conservation uh, program. So again, that's something that maybe the park authority could look at. The majority of respondents say they were interested in shark diving. They say more opportunities would encourage them to uh, visit Sudwana more often. Interestingly, despite the growth of sh uh, baited shark diving at places like Aliwal Shoal, most divers at Sudwana were very, very anti-baiting uh, to attract more sharks um, as a dive attraction. Now, Sudwana is one of the best known places in the country to dive with ragged two sharks. This is what they look like. But there's been concern uh, raised since 2005. The drop in the number of ragged two sharks has possibly been caused by too many divers uh, diving at once and overcrowding this species. So since 2005, uh, diving has been temporarily halted on the reef. And what was nice is that, uh, that most respondents were in support of that closure. So it's nice to see that a management decision has been made that is not only protecting the shark species, but is also um, favorably um, supported by the divers. And that's the ideal management solution. So the majority of respondents, those that had conducted a shark dive, most of those had dive with ragged two sharks. This is one. Forty-three percent had dived with a whale shark. This is despite the fact that operators in Sudwana aren't allowed to advertise whale shark diving. But there's plenty of whale sharks, and when the opportunity exists, this is a great attraction for people to dive with. That's a white tip reef shark. A small proportion of dive with grey reef sharks, and some divers had also experienced uh, bull sharks. Now, participants were asked to rank um, from one to five which of these categories contributed to the enjoyment of their dive experience. And not surprisingly, viewing a large shark, being close to nature, it's a new diving experience, were pretty much the highest rank factors. What was nice to see is the quality of the dive and the quality of the operator all rank very highly. So that's encouraging for the good management um, of shark diving at the moment and certainly um, bodes very well for the long-term sustainability of shark diving at Sudwana. Despite, unfortunately, despite rigorous dive briefings uh, by the operators that you shouldn't touch a shark when you're diving, a small proportion of divers did. Um, and overwhelmingly, it was simply because they wanted to be close to a shark. That doesn't excuse it. Um, it's something the dive operators are trying to stop. But again, it's something that uh, maybe the park authority should be aware of um, to encourage, to further encourage that people should not touch uh, wildlife. So how much does the shark, uh, how much is the diving industry worth at Sudwana, and how much do are sharks worth? So these are all the mean participant expenditures for all the different um, costs related to diving at Sudwana. And when you extrapolate that out to the total number of divers, you come up with a figure of 75 million rands. Now, even though this is, it's important to note, say this is just direct expenditure. It's not including induced benefits, there would be the cost that maybe um, a, a dive owner pays in wages or in fuel. It doesn't include existence values, that's the premium someone would pay just to keep an area pristine. It doesn't include option values, which is the future value of tourism um, activity. So this is a very, very conservative estimate, but it certainly sort of gives you an idea of the value. These were the, uh, the costs that we tried to apportion to um, the different categories of diving. And we can see, not surprisingly, reef diving uh, was the, the most valuable sort of category of diving at Sudwana. 
But we can see, you know, between Brangatu sharks and whale, uh, whale sharks, that's almost 3 million rands. Again, it just gives you an indication to the potential, well, not just the current value of shark diving, but maybe the potential value of shark diving to the uh, MPA. So looking at some of the importance of shark diving to the operators, we also surveyed operators to get a sort of a feel uh, of the importance of shark diving to their business. 11 of the 12 operators who responded to the questionnaire, there's actually 16 concessionaire operators at Sudwana, um, stated they conducted some form of shark diving. Shark diving, however, uh, contributed less than 10% of their business revenue. Um, and less than 5% for seven of them. So currently shark diving, it, it, it's small at Sudwana. Reefs is really what people are coming to view. Seven of the operators stated they would like to develop some form of dedicated shark diving in the, uh, in the future, particularly with bull and tiger sharks. However, only two of them wanted to use bait or have prepared to use bait to get the sharks um, closer to the divers. Now, Baited diving, the reason the operators, or some of the operators want to uh, develop baited diving at Sudwana is based on the success um, they've had at Ali Shoal baiting for tiger sharks and black tip sharks. Baited dives at um, Ali Shoal off the KZN coast is now the primary attraction that people go to Ali Wall. There's a little bit of concern, however, that maybe baiting could change the, the movement patterns of sharks and the behavior of sharks. And that, combined with the fact that most divers at Sudwana are vehemently against baiting, and the fact that most operators are also against baiting, again is something that the park authorities should keep in mind if they ever do decide to implement um, baited diving in the future. It's, it's probably not the right thing to do for Sudwana. One new attraction that could be maybe developed to Sudwana, whale sharks. Um, in the last decade, microlite flights over Sudwana have suggested there's probably enough whale sharks to maybe uh, sustain a seasonal whale shark diving business. Um, whale sharks, they're worth $10 million in Thailand, $6 million in Australia, and $5 million in Seychelles. So the economic value of whale sharks, combined with the fact that people are diving with whale sharks already, suggests that it's maybe an activity that could be um, maybe looked at to develop in Sudwana going forward. So just to wrap things up, although sharks contribute only 5% of diver expenditure, they, they, they do nevertheless constitute an important revenue stream and they certainly contribute to maintaining the health of the marine environment. In, in multi-use MPAs, uh, so recreational fishing and diving are both important recreational activities. Hopefully by attaching an economic value to sharks, that could motivate um, the uh, Isamangaliso Wetland Park authorities to motivate for their protection. So one thing they could do is implement a strict catch and release policy. It's important to know as a multiple use MPA, fishing is, just a, is probably just as valuable, if not more so, activity at Sudwana. A catch and release policy, not only would that allow the fishermen to continue with their, um, their activity, but at the same time, you're protecting sharks that are an attraction to the divers. So that's something that um, I'm happy to say has been implemented or is about to be implemented. And I like to think the results of this study did in some way contribute to that. Yes, it did. Okay. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, all right, so in conclusion, within the Isamangaliso Wetland Park, without a doubt, the value of a live shark, not just to diving, but also to the health of the marine environment, finally, hugely outweighs the one-off cost of a dead shark. Thank you very much.